Well, this is probably the most common format of posters here is one giant poster and one giant picture that you gotta fit on a poster with some words. So today I'll teach you guys two ways to do this. It's actually harder than it seems to do these kind of things. And the best part is it uses a single grid. They share the same grid system. Let's go. Okay, for those of you that have been here for a while, you guys know that we're gonna do all of this in InDesign. So here in InDesign, the most common poster sizes, we got 11 by 17, we got 18 by 24, we got 24 by 36. Let's take something in the middle, let's do the 18 by 24 size, but this grid and this uh, layout should work for all three of these. So I'm gonna go in here, change this into inches. We're gonna do our 18 by 24 in portrait orientation, so 18, 24. Now important that we just have one page. We don't really need any facing pages and we're gonna start on one as well. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and up the margins. So I'm gonna just keep it on one inch. Now if your page is 11 by 17, maybe take that down to like a 0.5. And we obviously want some bleed because if we do any full bleed images, we'll want this to be higher than zero. All right, now that we have this page created, we're gonna go up into layout, create guides, and the magic guide we're using today for both of these layouts is going to be five rows and just two columns. Now, feel free to adjust the gutters, but for this uh, 18 by 24 inch, we're gonna use something a little bit higher than what it defaulted to. So maybe something like a 0.25 inch would do really good for us. Now this first layout respects all the margins and boundaries that we set up on the page. We're just gonna keep everything nice and tight in the center of the page with the white border on the outside. Very clean and it gets the job done. Hey everyone, if you're still looking to get an Adobe subscription with Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, all that good jazz, and you wanna support the channel, I have affiliate link down in the description where you can get that. It'll really help me out and keep all this nice video coming for you guys. With students and educators, you can get that for $19.99, which is a great price for all the different apps that are actually on the platform. So get that, support the channel, and I really appreciate it. So with any layout, we're gonna start off with our big anchoring image, okay? And after laying that out, the rest will be super easy. So what we're gonna do is actually just create a nice rectangular frame tool, and we're gonna drag it from the second grid all the way down to the bottom of our page. And all you have to do from here is drag in your image. Now it's gonna come in at a little bit of a bigger resolution or bigger size than you want. So we can right click on this and then we can go into fitting and then just fit the frame proportionally. That's going to just squeeze everything so that the picture fits the frame. Okay, now it's a very straight edge. What we're going to do to change that is click on the frame itself we're gonna go into the objects and we're gonna go into corner options. So after this corner option window pops up, we're gonna change all of these into a rounded corner. And make sure you have the preview checked on and just play around with it until you like a fillet or a corner that you think will work well on this page. Now I think 0.5 is a little bit big for my corners, so I'm gonna take it down to maybe 0.375. Now it's important that you remember this number because we wanna keep the fillet pretty consistent on all the other elements on the page as well. So take a note, a mental note of this number so we can use it later. Go ahead and click okay. Now the text is also pretty important on any poster and all we really need is a title as well as some body text. So let's start off with a type tool and we're just gonna drag it on the top of the page here. Since this is going to be the title, we're gonna make this one pretty big. Now, we're on an 18 by 24 inch poster, so let's make this something a lot bigger, like a 72. And you're just gonna type in your title. Make sure you change this into the font that you like. Here, I'm gonna use something like a Futura, like I always do. Next, we just need the body text. You can do something like this, where I basically create a body of text, and then what I'm going to do to make this read a lot better is I'm going to click on this body of text, right click, and then I'm gonna go into the text frame options. So here I'm gonna show you guys what this is going to do. For the fixed number of columns, I'm actually gonna turn this up to three columns. You can see that it really breaks up this big body of text and just makes everything a lot more approachable. So after clicking that, you can see that my text is broken up into three different columns and it just looks a lot more clean than if you just have a long strip. Nobody really wants to read anything like that. Okay, so it's 
good we got the text in but it's looking a little bit plain wouldn't you guys agree in order to spice this up a very common technique that people use is to just put strips of color dividing the different elements on the page and these colors relate to the picture so we're going to go ahead and get started with the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna drag out some rectangles. It doesn't have to be perfect, the size. So after we have this box nice and colored, we can go ahead and make this into a nice flitted shape as well. We're gonna repeat this exact same steps. So select the box that you just created. We're gonna go up into objects. We're gonna go down into corner options. And I'm just gonna give this one a 3.5 as well, or 3.75, similar to what we did with the image so that those two match up. So I really like this as a divider in between the title and the body text. So I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna go ahead and just make a bunch more of these. And again, we're just sampling colors that are prominent in the big photo that we have down here. Does seem like we're missing something on the top right here. So let's make element to populate that area as well. Now, what I'm gonna do and what I'm gonna teach you guys this is super simple, but it's very, very, very useful in InDesign is you're gonna drag out a nice type tool and we're just going to go ahead and drag it on the top here. Say for example, I wanted the date of this poster or the date of this event or anything else that you guys wanna do. Maybe it's the name of your organization. Uh, I'm gonna put that in this box. Then what I'm gonna do is go ahead and change this into the font that I want. So Futura. We're going to change the background color of this text box. So go up to fill, and then I'm gonna change it to the same color as my title here, which is black. Now, now we can't really see the letters, so I'm gonna change this into the paper color, which is white, and then it's gonna appear again. Now you can see that I have selected the stroke instead of the fill and that's why it's outlining it. So all we have to do is switch that between the fill and the stroke and then the letters will pop up. Okay, that's looking good. Then we're gonna go into right click and then text frame options. Now we're gonna want to increase the inset spacing because right now the letters are touching the top of the box but we don't want that. We kind of want it in the middle. And then that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to just hit OK. And I'm also going to make sure that this is middle justified on the page. So that looks pretty good. And then we're doing the exact same thing where we're giving it a corner that is filleted. So corner options go into our rounded edge. And we're going to go up to 3.75 once again. So the best part about this layout too is that you can just take the image out and just swap the places of the text and the image. So drag these so that it's on the bottom quadrant and then the image on the top quadrant and it'll function the same way. In fact, I might even think it looks better. What do you guys think? Do you guys like the image on the top or the bottom for this one? Let me know in the comments. All right guys, now this next one's going to be a little bit more involved. It's going to be a whole full bleed image. So getting started, we have the same grid and we have the same bleed. What we're going to do is just drag out a rectangular frame tool so that we anchor our image in from the top of the bleed mark to the bottom of the bleed mark. And again, we're just going to drag in the image that we're using and then just fit it to the frame proportionally. Now that we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and create two different layers, one image, one text, put this on the image layer and just lock it. Then I'm only gonna work on the text layer because that's all that's left to make this composition work. So zoom in in here, we need a title, we need a subheading, and then we need an element on the bottom, similar to what we did up here with the November 16th. So let's go ahead and make our first title text. I'm gonna drag a nice wide box all the way on the top here. And again, just populate it with whatever text, whatever font, and whatever color reads best. Okay, so after you've done that, we're gonna adjust the tracking on these texts so it takes up more presence on the page. So we're gonna highlight everything here, go into the tracking, which is this symbol over here, and I'm gonna give it a nice 100. Same thing on the top here, we're gonna give it a nice 100. Now on the bottom here, we're also gonna use a similar element to what we did above. Oh, that's locked, so I'm gonna unlock that, cover, and just drag that over so that we have the same element. I might need to change the layer to text, and then just lock the image again. Okay, we also adjusted the size as well as the character size of our box element over here. And we're gonna actually change the color of this. So instead of the black fill, we're gonna turn it into none. And we're actually gonna give it a stroke instead. So a nice white paper stroke 
with I think a nice one point is pretty nice and clean. Maybe we'll give it two. And here I'm noticing that I have a black stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and adjust this into none. Uh, and then go ahead and just drag this so that it looks nice on the page. Okay, drag this guy down and we're also going to make some more anchoring elements for the title itself. And one of the simplest ways to do this is just to drag out two lines. So I'm going over to the line tool, dragging out one line on the top, holding shift, giving it a nice stroke, so paper stroke. And then we're gonna do something a little bit thicker, maybe a three points. So holding Alt here, I'm copying this all the way down below our title here. And then if we do a quick preview, you can see that it really, really pushes out the title in your face. Now I can see that my text is not reading very good, so you can actually move this image down. So I'm gonna unlock this image. I'm gonna move it down because I know there's a lot more dark space on the top. But if you can't do that, and this is a really helpful hint for you guys, here's another way to achieve the same effect. What you're going to do is go into the rectangle tool, and then you're just gonna drag a rectangle over the entire page itself. Now, since I'm using white text, I want the background to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna give this a dark fill, so black fill. And then it is now on top of everything, so I need to arrange it. So right click, arrange, send to back. You can see that my letters are going to pop up in front of this thing. And what I'm gonna do is adjust the opacity so that I can see the letters better. So maybe it's something like this, where I'm at around 35% opacity. And then we're gonna take the gradient feather tool and we're just going to drag it so that it doesn't affect the entire image, just the parts that we need the text to read. So play around with this, drag it around so that the text reads a lot better with our black mask, but it doesn't affect the rest of the image. Now, in order to finish this up, it's super simple. All you have to do is get a text box in the bottom and populate it with text that is center justified and the correct color. Now you can adjust the size of this text box in the bottom to make it whatever size you need, but just make sure that it is coming all the way from this bottom margin and going upwards. So there you have it. There is our first layouts over here and then our second layout over here. Let me know what you guys learned and which one do you guys like better? Which one would you probably use more? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.